Beginning in October, the Army plans to station an active unit inside the United States for the first time to serve as an on-call federal response in times of emergency. The 3rd Infantry Division's 1st Brigade Combat Team has spent 35 of the last 60 months in Iraq, but now the unit's training for domestic operations. The unit will soon be under the day-to-day -day control of U.S. Army North, the Army Service Component of Northern Command. The Army Times reports this new mission marks the first time an active unit has been given a dedicated assignment to Northern Command. The paper says the Army unit may be called upon to help with civil unrest and crowd control. The soldiers are learning to use so-called non-lethal weapons designed to subdue unruly or dangerous individuals and crowds. Is it far-fetched to imagine that these UN peacekeeping forces would be used against American citizens? The 502nd, another unit from Fort Campbell, Kentucky, is shown here arriving as peacekeepers in Somalia wearing their UN Blue Berets and UN insignia. Shortly thereafter, this same unit, the 502nd, was in Arkansas practicing house-to-house -house searches and seizures in a joint UN training mission called Agile Provider in the spring of 1994. Agile Provider involved 44,000 UN troops, including troops from France and the Netherlands, training in the states of Georgia, North and South Carolina, Arkansas and Tennessee. Yes, UN troops have been trained in this country in the past, but not in brigade strengths and not in domestic support house-to-house -house searches and seizures. Many of our congressmen deny that UN troops are being trained in this country at all, but as you can see in these clips from Fort Chaffee, Arkansas, Germans were training here last spring. This is the Barrage 1660. UN training has become so widespread that many of the newspapers around the country have had at least one such story. This official news release from the Navy High Command, Atlantcom further confirms that U.N. troops were training in this country this past spring in forcible entries of homes using special operations tactics. News releases from around the country speak of law enforcement and military training together for so-called terrorist suppression involving attacks on civilian facilities. Did you know that 49 of our most famous landmarks have been given to the United Nations as supposed biospheres? Yet many of these supposed biospheres are located outside military facilities and are used for covert UN military special operations training areas. On the border between the U.S. and Canada, we see the UN flag flying between the U.S. and Canadian flags. Throughout cities in America, UN flags are popping up outside government buildings. But perhaps most disturbing was this letter received by New American Magazine detailing a survey given to Marines at 29 Palms Base. We confirmed this survey was given to Army Special Operations recruits. The survey asked troops whether they would swear to the following code. I am a United Nations fighting person. I serve in the forces which maintain world peace and every nation's way of life. I am prepared to give my life in their defense. This survey also asked if these U.S. military men would fire upon U.S. citizens who refuse or resist confiscation of firearms banned by the U.S. government. Did you notice the federal tax agents dressed like military patrolling the roads during the Waco siege or the black military helicopters at each of the Indy 500 races for the past several years? We found that these state facilities are being built in the middle of U.S. Army property, not just in Indiana, but other states, as people sent us pictures of such facilities in their states, such as this facility at Camp Pinckney in Brighton, Michigan. You see not only the black vans here, but curiously, there are reverse swastikas carved into each end of the roof. We also began to receive information about the Federal Emergency Management Agency known as FEMA, such as these pictures of a FEMA facility in Texas. FEMA operations are divided into ten regions, as we were told in this letter from FEMA. The American public has been led to believe that FEMA is for disaster relief operations. Yet if we look at military manuals, such as FM 4130, the U.S. Army Civil Affairs and Operations Manual, you'll find the details about who FEMA really is. The government doesn't want this information out because, as you can see, the manual says to destroy it by any means that will prevent its dissemination. 
The manual says that FEMA is the executive agency that serves as the point of contact for the USG for emergency management within the United States. Under Executive Order 12148 of July 20th, 1979, the President transferred all functions from the Civil Defense Civil Preparedness Agencies under the Department of Defense to FEMA. FEMA develops and implements overall concepts and policy guidance and directs activities for nationwide plans and preparedness for emergencies during peace and war. It also develops plans, systems, and capabilities for protection of the U.S. populace, government, and industry, and for stabilization of the economy in time of emergency. Again, we see from this military manual that FEMA is divided into ten regions and is the command and control agency for all emergency planning. None of this sounds too sinister until you begin to find out what FEMA has done with 96% of their budget. FEMA has built prisons around the country, and they've also built underground facilities. It actually turns out that they are the key agency to implement a plan known as Operation Garden Plot, the plan to put American citizens in prison camps. Under Executive Order 12919, signed by Bill Clinton on June 3, 1993, presidential authority under a 1950s Defense Production Act was delegated to the Secretaries of Defense, Agriculture, Treasury, and Commerce to seize all civilian property for the government solely by declaring them necessary for national defense. It also gave the director of FEMA the authority to implement FEMA plans during a national emergency. Most people don't realize that this country has been in a declared state of emergency since the Federal Emergency Act was enacted in 1933, which was the beginning of FEMA, and also gave presidents the authority to issue executive orders. Each president since then has issued an executive order declaring a state of national emergency. Bill Clinton has issued three such orders since he took office. Shown here is a FEMA facility in Denton, Texas, where you can see mile after mile of FEMA command and control trailers. These trailers are self-sustaining and contain electrical generators and communications equipment that can be moved out anywhere in the country to start a FEMA operations center. Several military manuals such as these manuals, ranging from 1985 through 1994, speak of FEMA as the implementing agency for Operation Garden Plot, the plan to put American citizens in prison camps under military control. This 1994 field manual for military police speaks of Operation Garden Plot as a DOD civil disturbance plan that tells the military what they can and cannot do and that they will operate under FEMA control. Several thousand U.S. troops are training in the U.S. this summer and fall, and if we look around us, we can see plenty of the signs and symptoms of a global takeover under the auspices of the United Nations taking place right here in our country. These trucks are Soviet trucks imported from eastern Germany, parked at a private facility in the DeSoto National Forest in Sautier, Mississippi, just outside Gulfport off Highway 59. A sign on the facility says Airmar. Airmar is privately owned, but the signs on fences around the facility say this is a U.S. Customs facility. Several acres of federal forest land was bulldozed to create this customs facility solely for Airmar. No one knows for sure what this facility really is, but one thing is certain, it's not what we're being told it is. And there are 750 Soviet chemical trucks sitting in Mississippi whose sole use is to spray chemicals and nerve gas in chemical warfare operations. What are they doing in Mississippi? What are they doing on U.S. soil? And why are they under the protection of the U.S. government if they are privately owned? Senator Sam Nunn from Georgia was quoted as saying he was certain the American public would welcome the Soviet troops as peacekeeping forces in the United States. Not only have these Soviet trucks been found in Mississippi, people recently photographed these two clearly marked Soviet vehicles in Texas. 
This train full of American-made tanks was one of seven such trains that passed through Indianapolis en route to Fort Lewis, Washington in June. We were told that this was the third armored division returning from Europe. Yet Fort Lewis has such a severe housing shortage that many military families are actually living in tents. Yet this whole division is being sent there. Three other such trains passed through Indianapolis in early August, one heading to Fort Riley, Kansas, another to Alabama, and the third to Fort Lewis, Washington. Are these tanks part of Operation Garden Plot, to be used to round us up for the slave labor camps, along with the black helicopters and federal law enforcement that look like active duty military stationed in our roadways as they were in Waco? Welcome to the New World Order. Expect no mercy.